Yesterday, the world came to a standstill after the greatest political minds in the world, also known as 4chan users, were unable to access their accounts. But it wasn't just a simple website outage. 4chan was hacked by a rival gang of internet shuds from a website called Soyjack.party, or just Shardy for short. They vandalized the website by resurrecting a defunct forum and posting you got hacked in it. But that's hardly the bad part. They also leaked the private emails and IP logs of janitors, which are like low-level admins on the website. But it gets even worse than that. The 4chan Chan website is apparently written in PHP, and I know this because the hackers hacked it like hackers hack in hacking movies. They didn't gain access with stolen passwords, phishing, or social engineering, but instead they exploited an actual security vulnerability in the website's backend code. In today's video, we'll perform a code review of 4chan and find out how it got wrecked by a bunch of soyjacks. It is April 16th, 2025, and you're watching The Code Report. One of the reasons technology doesn't get hacked more often is thanks to a thing called the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures Database. When Whenever I make a video about a hacking incident, I usually reference a CVE dictionary entry, which keeps track of details about software vulnerabilities and their severity. This database, though, relies on government funding. It's operated by a nonprofit, but as of today, its US government funding expires, and the Department of Homeland Security has decided to defund it. And that means you'll need to go somewhere else to figure out how vulnerable your software is. Actually, this just in, as soon as I finish recording that line, it looks like the government changed its mind and is now going to renew the contract. That's good news, but I still have bad news if you're an Anon edgelord on 4chan. The Soyjack party is actually the remnants of a board called QA, which was originally just for questions and answers, but it devolved or evolved into a Soyjack factory. Things got chaotic there with cross-board beefs, janitor hate, and obsessive posting about moderation, and so QA was removed in 2021, and that led to the bitter creation of Soyjack party. Well, after yesterday's hack, all of these exiled basejacks made a glorious return to their homeland on QA. In addition, they accessed staff emails, a private board for staff members, and the interesting discovery of moderation tools, which confirms that when you're banned, they give you one reason and show staff a different reason, which is a common practice in big social media, like when YouTube just tells me I violated the community guidelines without giving me a reason. But the reality is that YouTube does have a real reason for banning every video that can only be seen by staff members. But now the question is how did these soyjacks get access to 4chan? Surprisingly, it wasn't your typical social engineering password theft. It was mostly the fault of egregiously out-of-date software. So 4chan Chan is written in PHP, and it allows uploading PDFs to certain boards, but they neglected to verify that the uploaded file is actually a PDF file. As such, PostScript files containing PostScript drawing commands can be uploaded. This PostScript file will be passed into GhostScript to generate a thumbnail image, but the version of GhostScript that 4chan uses is from 2012. In fact, we could search the CVE website I mentioned earlier to find vulnerabilities affecting GhostScript. From there, the hacker was able to elevate himself to a global user, thus completing a full penetration. And even though he or she had access to all user data, they chose not to expose it like a docs jack, with the exception of 4chan janitors. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to show the hack source code in this video because I don't want to violate the community guidelines, but one interesting thing they found is that 4chan aggressively attempts to fingerprint your browser, and that's likely to control spam and prevent ban evasion. In addition, they're using a version of PHP that hasn't been updated since 2016, and the hacker posted a screenshot of it running on FreeBSD version 10.1, which came out in 2014 and stopped getting patches nearly a decade ago, and that's running a MySQL database with the NODB engine that's currently hosting over 10 million banned users. If you have that much data though and want things to be magically faster, a much better database option is Timescale, the sponsor of today's video. It's an open source high performance database, and because it's built on top of Postgres, you can handle transactional data in addition to demanding time series, real time analytics, and vector data, all on an ecosystem you already know. It's extremely fast and efficient, and proves Postgres can handle high ingest and low latency queries for customer facing applications at scale. And that's thanks to automatic partitioning, a hybrid row columnar engine, and optimized query execution. The end result is a real time analytics database that's faster than anything else on the planet. Check out the open source benchmarks to see for yourself. Or better yet, just use Timescale because it's open source and self hostable. Or try it for free in the cloud right now with the link below. This has been the Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.